Put guests between. Can I get Joe, Joe, and Chuck to stand up real quick? <laughs> Joe. Joe, Joe, and Joe. Yeah, <laughs> Which one's his twin? Well, the twin. You want to identify yourself, twin? It's his twin. It's his twin. He's a twin. They are polar opposites, right? In just about every way, shape, or form. The dad uh, joined the Air Force at, in '75 after graduating high school. Spent some time in California, spent some time in Alaska, then got out, came, uh, went back to Washington State where he enlisted from, met mom, well, new mom, Bridget, uh, from high school. They got married, dad bounced around a couple jobs, did some teaching stuff for a little bit, right? Yeah. And then he uh, got offered a position after uh, mom's, our grandfather, Papa, um, said, hey, we're, we've got this site out in the middle of Yakima, Washington. You want to come join over at NSA? And from there, it's been, what, 38 years? 39. 39 years of uh, service uh, in, in NSA. From then, you know, he's spent some time in, in, in Menwood Hill and here and back in Yakima. Uh, but during that time, he grew a family. He had five kids. He has nine grandkids, eight grandkids. I lost count. <laughs> Obviously, none of them are mine. <laughs> <laughs> eight grandkids and lost their Eight grandkids. Guilty. So, eight grandkids. Um, eight grandkids. Um, all, of the, all of his kids have gone on to do different things, have uh, gone on to really, um, some of us, have, you know, some of them have been successful, some of us not been successful. Guilty. Um, so <laughs> we are, but we are always kind of in awe of, of our father <laughs> and all the things that he's done. But he's not here and he's not traveling and he's not waking up at 3.30 in the morning. He's involved in the church. He does, he's a, uh, he's a very good singer. He's in the choir. He has a lot of time spent in the church doing a little fix it here and there for the for the uh, for the community as well as just sort of being the all-around person that when they need somebody to uh, help whether it's CCD running the entire religious education program dad's the one they they turn to dad and, and mom right mostly mom telling dad <laughs> so uh, now he's gonna go on Nobody's quite sure what he's going to do. I don't even think he knows what he's going to do. But he is going to not wake up at 3.30 in the morning. Ooh. A thing, a, some, something, something he has been doing for the last 25 years. Damn. Is that right? Yeah, since 96. 25 years, 3.30 in the morning, hour and a half, two hours. You all know how the uh, traffic around here can be very unpredictable. But to sacrifice for myself, my brother, my sister, grandkids, and, and the rest of the family gathered here. So, Dad, from all of us, congratulations. We're so happy. We're so proud. And you've done amazing things. From what I can assert, you know, kind of, kind of assume <laughs> you've done amazing things. Um, but there, Dave and, uh, um, I'm sorry, Bill, Bill are going to talk about the uh, other things you've done. So, congratulations. Yeah. All right, so uh, my name is Paul Wolf. I'm actually the Adam Supervisor. I work at Chance Work Event uh, every day for the past three years or so. Uh, Jane actually sits right next to him and works with him as well. So, uh, I think what you said, I was really kind of pointing to what I want to mention. So, you know, as, I, the work we do is really important. Uh, it, it really is, I think we do some really impactful stuff. We get to touch some technologies and push the boundaries of that for the good of our country. Um, and Adam is one of the key players in doing that. So, so I doesn't talk about a lot, but I can't talk about too much. Uh, but if you actually walk around the museum and see some of the things that have been done, 
some of the work that we're doing, we believe will be in this museum in maybe a couple hundred years. So. <laughs> <laughs> so there your grandkids, grandkids will read about it. Um, but no, seriously, it, it really is important. Um, but it's some of the other things that really I think make an impact. So, um, you know, as a supervisor, we usually try to meet like at least once a month, kind of one on one, talk about what's going on in the office, the work that he's doing, and then usually try to, you know, like, is there anything else you know I should know about? Or do you have any ideas or something like that? And the secret is, we really don't want anybody to say yes to Adam. No, I'm good, right? <laughs> but Adam usually will have something, and it's about how to make the office better and how to make the people in the office feel more comfortable or do things better. So he's always thinking about others and how to make things better, uh, not just at the, the macro level, but the micro level. And I think that's really what's going to miss the most is kind of the relationships, what he brings to the table there. So um, thank you, Adam, for everything you've done. It's been a pleasure working with you. And I'll let James say a couple things before we can share some good yes. stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> same department in the microelectronics. So he does have you know, a, a long background in that microelectronics area. So he used to be the technical director for uh, microelectronics design. And so a lot of the work that he did uh, was development plans for new technology in response to changing agency you know, work. So, um, and he also served as the executive committees on panels for different uh, um, superconducting and computing and electronic parts. Um, but while he was working in R33, he, you know, his knowledge on analog and digital design has really helped our team to truly understand what, you know, uh, new technology, how to use, you know, some of the uh, design work that he had done previously, you know, towards that. So. We are so grateful that he was within our team, and um, you know he would give um, you know advice to some of the uh, people that we work with that's doing new technology work, and you know having heated discussions sometimes <laughs> on needing to you know maybe think somewhere else in the design that they're doing something like that so yes it has been an interesting adventure for us all <laughs> um and i will miss adam because he is one of the uh early morning people and i'm one of the early morning people too so he and i would chat most times before anyone even thought about even waking up at this point so <laughs> So I will miss Adam um, because you know sometimes we would talk about I was thinking about going to Men with Hill you know at one point and so I would talk to him about that a little bit but you know COVID hit and then you know that just kind of got to be real. So anyway, <laughs> that is um, uh, you know part of working with Adam has been a great honor. So we do have a few gifts. So um, this. Sure. So this is a uh, wafer that um, we were able to obtain, and so it's probably not one that you designed, but you know it is an example of one. So, and a lot of the office members uh, signed it. So. Okay.
Um, so before I give a couple of things to you from the agency, um, I'll also share a few reflections. So uh, two things. One, and you're probably not going to remember this, but one of the things I usually do in a situation like this, I'm just leaving or retiring or whatever, is I do some email archaeology and I see what interesting nuggets I can find from way back when and, and bring back hopefully happy memories or at least interesting memories. <laughs> Unfortunately, right now, I'm unable to access my older emails, so that was off the table. <laughs> but I wanted to uh, recollect one thing, which you're not going to remember this, it was shortly after he joined us, right? He brought to the table uh, a skill set that we hadn't had adopted, like microelectronics design. <coughs> and uh, I, I'm a physicist, so I'm not really particularly strong in that area. And I was trying to learn a thing or two that might make me a little bit more useful. So I was reading about filter designs. Uh, there are band pass filters, and there are high pass filters, and low pass filters. And uh, being a physicist, I was being very practical about this. I was looking for basic theoretical underpinnings, not of the devices, but just the concept of filters. And so I went up to Adam and thought, okay, I'm going to learn something about him and learn something about what I'm trying to learn. And I asked him something only a physicist would ask an engineer, which is something about causality. Now, causality, if you've ever seen science fiction movies, and we're talking about space-time continuum stuff here. <laughs> and, and, um, so you probably don't remember that, but right. Not so I understood. Not so <laughs> right. But um, you know, he kind of looked at me kindly and, um, and and humored me and listened to what I had to say. And what I walked away from with that was I was A, probably walking down the wrong path. But B, that Adam was a very diplomatic person. Because he didn't shoot me down, he didn't tell me you're doing stuff that no useful engineer would ever think about. <laughs> um, you know, he listened to what I had to say and kind of redirected me. Um, but this kind of relates to some of the things that Phil and, and James said. Um, and uh, they both talked about uh, how good he is to have on the team. Um, what a, a, a kind of locker room personality Phil has. It's very helpful. Uh, I don't know how you all think about him, but he's very kind. Um, and so I, I think what I'll say is that if you use a sports metaphor from basketball, he's a triple threat. That is, um, a triple threat is somebody who's, when they got the ball, there's kind of three things they can do. They can shoot, right, if they're out on the perimeter, you 20, 25 feet away. They can drive to the basket, or they can pass it off. So each of those three things is a useful metaphor for us. So if you shoot, that's kind of an artist you it's a high-skill high thing. And there have been instances where um, Adam has brought up very new and novel ideas that have been useful us and the research that I've um, Driving to the basket, that's really just knowing your stuff and grinding it out. And similarly, in those heated discussions that Jane was mentioning, <laughs> that's bringing that to bear and working through issues sort of step by step and trying to make progress is going to be really impactful. And then um, passing off and being a good team player. He's an exceptional team player. The example I just gave my experience with him is, is one example of that. But all the ways that he shares knowledge um, and is helpful to others, help them do their jobs. So, thank you for all of that, and we're going to miss that and miss you. Um, so, we do have some offerings here, but I'm not going to start with you. I'm going to start with your wife. And this is kind of symbolic of the whole family and the contribution. But something that's very important to the agency, which is to recognize we go that there? all of this hard work is. Sure. And then when you said 30. You said the family, let's go. <coughs> well, somebody did some, some oh, with the agency, 43 years of federal service. Yes. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so it's the contributions that the family make to help that become a reality, and help those contributions that he has made to us uh, just in the past few years and to the agency for all of these decades. So um, this is in tribute to Bridget Wirtz. Upon the occasion of your spouse's retirement from the National Security Agency, you are commended for your unselfish, faithful, and devoted support. Your unfailing support and understanding have been vital ingredients to the lasting contribution of your spouse.
Um, <laughs> so upon the occasion of your interview to Adam Morris, Jr. Yes. Upon the occasion of your retirement, after 43 years of federal service, you're commended for your dedication to the United States government and your support for the mission of the National Security Agency. Your commitment has contributed significantly to our mutual effort. Your co-workers and friends join together to bid you fond farewell and to wish you happiness. things that the agency does. And by the way, they don't always box it these days. I don't know what's up with that. We've got a box. That's cool. Um, so this is a United States flag, and I'll read the uh, citation so you know kind of a little bit about it, um, why it's special. Who died? So uh, this certifies that the accompanying flag of the United States of America was flown over the National Security Agency on 21 December. 2022, so you can just buy it some gift shop. Right? This actually was up on the uh, campus flying over the agency. Uh, this flag is presented to you on the occasion of your retirement in recognition of your service to the National Security Agency. So, Adam, thank you so much for everything you've done. <laughs> from your team one cohorts, your undying positivity has just been amazing to have you come in on Monday mornings and say it is the best day of the week. <laughs> and that we have five days to do amazing work. And if we can't do it here, then we probably can't do it anywhere. Your team is going to miss you. Uh, Good luck. Hey. Speech. Yes. Speech. First of all, I would like to thank my wife, Bridget. Uh, 43 years. Well, for us, it was the 20, 39 years with the agency. But in that time, uh, I took her overseas. We had two field tours, which means we drove across the country several times with five kids. Not an easy thing to do sometimes. Uh, it's simple. The second trip, or the first trip, we promised the kids to go to Disneyland. We get one day away from Disneyland. And Los Angeles had the biggest earthquake in its history. Uh, we called the hotel where we were staying. They said, well, we're still open. We're on generators. We asked about Disneyland. And the guy on the phone said, I'm not even sure Disneyland is standard. So we didn't go to LA, we didn't go to Disneyland. Boom! <laughs> All over the exam. Um, you know, and I want to thank my kids too who had to you know, travel internationally, travel across the country in big cars, uh, four to five, six days straight. Let me tell you, it's not always an easy thing to do, and they have to put up with dad getting. Uh, be a little road weary after it. I can drive 160, 70 miles to work, but driving 27 to 100 miles across the country wasn't nonstop. Um, <laughs> I just want to thank them for, for all the support they've given me and all the times that because of work I had to miss things or uh, you know they had to, to uh, make other arrangements because I wasn't. Let's give his kids a round of applause. Let's give his kids a round of applause. <laughs>
I need to look at it that way. And I can never quite pull me that way. So I don't know, but um, I think it's been a wonderful career. I've had the opportunity to contribute to the uh, mission of the agency, I think, in, in many ways. Um, and sometimes I've had the opportunities, well, some of the, the best opportunities are when you're able to help an individual. During the first Gulf War, there was a period we were in England and um, we had an Air Force linguist that was going to be deployed to the, to the war zone his wife had health issues back in England. This was before cell phones. International calling was horrifically expensive. Um, but what, what I did for them was we did have Audubon or DSM, it's the military telephone system. And I made arrangements that so that, well, I reprogrammed the switch. So <laughs> <laughs> Without telling anybody, I figured it would, it would be easier to beg for forgiveness and ask for anything. So I reprogrammed Switch, he could call in on DSN, and then the Switch would call out to his home so that he could talk to his wife every night. So he was gone about six weeks when he got back. He, he'd come back and, and you know, thank us for setting that up. It, was, it really took a load off his, his mind and allowed him to concentrate on his work. And I think that instances like that you really remember. Um, sometimes you're part of a team and you try to contribute the best you can. Sometimes those contributions take a long time to flower, and you just have to work at it. And in my mind, I just say, okay, yeah, that should, that's, that was the right way to go. And for me, that, that was good enough. So I, I didn't have to be there when it, when it all came together, but I knew my contribution. And I want to thank all of uh, the people that put up with me at work and at home. Um, yeah, I've, been, I've enjoyed it. R33 has been a wonderful experience for me, and I got to meet a whole bunch of very talented people that um, just amazed the heck out of me. Some of the stuff that they know or do, uh, I just feel like, wow, these, these people are amazing. But of course they are, because we do amazing stuff. Everything. So thank you very much. Hey. Point to everybody back. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>